Hello everyone. Welcome back to the video session on flip flops. In the previous video session, we studied what are flip flops, what is the basic difference between a flip flop and a latch, how does a flip flop work, what is the necessity of the clock input, what are the difference, different clock inputs that can be given to the flip flops, and how does the clock input make your flip flops work efficiently. And we have studied in detail regarding the working of your SR flip flop with respect to the positive clock edge as well as negative clock edge. In this video session, we will be studying regarding two more flip flops. One of them is D flip flop and the other one is JK flip flop. So, as we all know, in case of your SR flip flop, when I speak about the SR flip flop, the problem with SR flip flop is when the inputs S and R both are equal to 1 and 1, the output will be undefined or you can say it will be in the illegal state. Illegal state means which cannot be defined. As a solution to this particular problem, they came out with a latch or a flip flop which is called as D flip flop or D latch. The same D latch what we have studied previously has been altered in order to make it a D flip flop. So you can see here, you have the same SR latch. So this is your SR latch and you can see the clock inputs that is a positive clock edge which is given to the SR latch. In addition to that, the input has been shorted and the complemented part is given to one of the input of the AND gate and the direct input is given to the other input of the AND gate. This complementation is done in order to avoid the last state that is illegal state which makes sure that 1 and 1 cannot happen here. It can either be 0, 1 or 1, 0. So whenever your D is equal to 0, one of the input is going to be 0 and the other input is going to be 1. Whenever the D is equal to 1, one of the input is going to be 1, the other one is going to be 0. So 0, 0 and 1, 1 cannot occur in case of your D latch or D flip flop. As you all know, when I speak it is a flip flop, a clock input has, be, has to be given. So I have taken the clock input and the clock input has been shorted and it is given to both the inputs of the AND gate. And the clock input what I have taken here is a positive edge. As you all know how to differentiate between the positive edge and the negative edge. So if it is a positive edge, normally the clock input will be indicated only by a triangle and if it is a negative edge, there will be a bubble ahead of the triangle saying that the clock input will be negated and it will be sent to the input side. Studying this with respect to the truth table, there are no changes with respect to the truth table of a latch and the flip flop. So as I said, it is a positive edge triggered. You can see the additional inputs which is a, a clock input which is pointing upward saying that the clock input what will be given as positive edge and one of the input or the input D is made 0. When D is made 0, your flip flop will be going to reset state. So what you can see this, uh, say with respect to this particular flip flop as this will be a transparent flip flop. Transparent flip flop means whatever data you are going to provide at the input side, the same will be reflected at the output side. So if you are providing 0 here, my output is going to become 0. When you are providing 1 here, my output is going to become 1. That is what this particular flip flop or latch says. So when d is equal to 0, this will be 0, this is 1, 1 into 0 is 0 and this will be 1 and 1. So this will be 1. So when r is 1, it will be reset which means that output is going to be 0. When d is made 1, when you are making d is equal to 1, this will become 1 into 1, this will become 1 into 0. So this will be 1 and this will be 0. So S is high. When S is high, your flip flop will be going to set state. Set state means it will be 1. That is what it has been indicated in this particular truth table. So moving on to the further circuit diagram, what you can see here, this is the practical circuit diagram when you are implementing a D flip flop. So you can see the clock inputs. You can see the D input here. You can see the D input here. And you can see the AND gate here. In addition to AND gate, this particular 
circuit diagram shows you two additional inputs one is preset and other one is clear so we'll be studying this particular preset and clear in detail when we when we get into the topic so basically this preset and clear are the inputs which are given to the memory elements in case if you want to clear all the data in the flip flop you need to make your clear input high let's say that i'm not going to give any clock input i'm not going to give any data input without giving any data input or without giving any clock input if you are planning to make or if you are planning to clear all the data in the particular flip flop then you can give the input as you can make this clear high suppose if you want to make the data in the flip flop one then you can preset you can give the preset input whenever you are, you are giving the preset input your output whenever you are giving preset equal to 1 your output q will become 1 whenever you are giving clear equal to 1 your q will become 0 so this preset and clear are the two additional inputs which are normally present in almost all the flip flops so that you can either erase of the data or you can key, you can make the data high in the flip flop without giving any clock input or without giving any data input that is what this particular circuit diagram tells you However, this particular additional inputs for the flip flop will be dealt as a separate topic. So, this is with respect to your positive edge trigger D flip flop, which is an altered version of your SR flip flop. So, instead of giving two inputs, I have just given one input in order to avoid the condition 1 and 1. Moving on further, a very important person of the digital electronic circuits or very important component of the memory element is this one jk flip flop so however we have studied with respect to your jk latch or we have studied with respect to uh, jk latches in the previous case so what changes you can see here is the advantage of this jk latches when i speak about s and r latch when i speak about s and r latch when the inputs are one and one this is normally not allowed so, in order to overcome this problem, they came out with the D latch, which was avoiding this particular condition. But an advanced version of this D latch can be called as JK latch or you can call it as JK flip flop, which allows the condition 1 and 1. When input 1 and 1 are given to this particular flip flop, your output that is QN plus 1 instead of going to illegal state it will enter a toggle state toggle state in the sense my output will become 1 it will become 0 it will become 1 it will become 0 it will become 1 it will become 0 as long as you are going on giving with the clock input your output is going to continuously change which means that your output will be continuously toggling from one state to other state that is what is the advantage of this particular flip flop so studying here you have the same latch you have the same sr latch here and you have the same inputs s and r which are given here and in addition to that i have two i have the clock input so clock input is given here and in addition to the clock input i have the inputs j and k this j and k are nothing but s and r inputs itself but the condition one and one is avoided by taking the feedback the output of the flip flop is taken and it is fed as input to the flip flop so this feeding of output back to the input will be avoiding the one and one condition so let us analyze the working so here you can see the truth table so if it is 0 and 0 no change previous state 0 and 1 so you can see this is uh, s and this is r okay so 0 and 1 r is high r is high means preset 1 and 0 that is s is 1 that is 1 1 and 1 in case of s and r it was illegal but in case of j and k it has toggled toggling in the sense if you connect an led here if you connect an led here this led will turn on turn off turn on turn off so as long as, as long as there is a clock input which is given here your led that is connected at the output side will be continuously turning on and it will be continuously turning off that is what is called as 
toggle state and that toggle state will occur in JK flip-flop just because of the feedback signal that is connected from the output of the flip-flop back to the input. So, let us study how basically this particular JK flip-flop works. So, when J and K are 0 and 0, see here, when J and K both are 0, both AND gates are disabled, obviously, right? So, this is also 0, this is also 0. So, 0 into anything will be 0 itself. So, this will be also 0 and 0 into anything will be 0 itself. So, S is also 0, R is also 0. When S and R are both are 0, therefore, even though you are giving the clock pulses, even though you are giving clock pulses, there will be no change in the output. My output is going to be the same as that of the previous state itself. Suppose that is the first case. When J is low, that is S is low and K is high, the upper gate is enabled because J is, yeah, J is what? J is 0, right? J is 0, K is 1. So, this will be 1 itself. This will be 1 itself. So, here I can say this is 1 into 0. This is 1 into 1. When J is low and K is high, the upper gate is disabled, obviously. Upper gate is disabled because J is 0, right? So, this will be disabled. So, there is no way for the flip-flop to set because S is going to be See, so there is no way to set the flip-flop. So, S cannot go high. S will always be low itself. The only possibility is to reset. So, what will happen is, when Q is high, the lower gate passes the reset pulse as soon as the negative clock edge arrives. This means that if Q has to become low, then J is equal to low k is equal to 1, which means that j is equal to 0, k is equal to 1, what will happen here is, so let us say previously this was, previously this was, uh, yeah, let us say this was 0, let us say this was 1 or let us say this was 1 or this was 0. So, this 1 will go to the input of the key and this will become 1 into 1 into 1, which will make your flip-flop reset. That is what it says. When j is equal to 0 and k is equal to 1, the upper gate is however disabled. Upper gate cannot become or it cannot be enabled. The only chance is it can reset. When it can reset, it can reset only when the output is 1. When the output will be 1, if the previous state was exhibiting the state 1, that output will be fed as input and that will become 1 into clock input is 1, k is 1 and the Feedback will also be 1, 1 into 1 into 1 which will make your reset input go high. If the reset input goes high, this will become 0 again. This will become 0 again and this will become 1 as of now. This is the second chance. Next is j is equal to 1, k is equal to 0. When j is equal to 1 and k is equal to 0, that is this one. When j is equal to 1 and k is equal to 0. This can never be enabled. I cannot enable this because this is going to be continuously off. This is going to be continuously off, right? But here, clock input is 1, j is 1. In the previous state, this had become 1. If you remember, this had become 1. So, this 1 will be fed back as input and this will become 1 into 1 into 1, which will make s is equal to 1. When s is equal to 1, your flip-flop will be set. When the flip-flop is set, your output is going to be 1. So, this will be exhibiting 1 and this will be exhibiting 0 now. This will be exhibiting 1 and this will be exhibiting 0 now. Now, what I am going to do is, I am going to make both j and k equal to 1. When both j and k are equal to 1, please consultate a very important concept. When j and k both are equal to 1, looking into the output here 1 and 0, looking into the output here 1 and 0, probably this will be disabled and this will be enabled. When this is disabled and this is enabled, this will become 0 and this will become 1, which means that this, no, this will become 1 and this will become 0. So, this was 1, right? Initially, this was 1. So, that 1 is fed here and it will, this will, be, j, k will become 1. So, in the next instance, this will be, this will be enabled and this will be disabled. And this is going to repeat continuously, making your output change. So, coming to here, when j is high, k is uh, 
lo the lower gate is disabled this has been very clearly explained no issues with respect to this when j and k both are high notice that there was a forbidden state with rs flip flop it is possible to reset or set the flip flop is q is high and the lower gate passes the reset pulse to the next positive trigger on the other hand when q is low the upper gate passes the set pulse on the positive edge either way q changes to complement of that of the last time so what he is saying is when j and k both are equal to 1 when j and k both are equal to 1 either this should have been 1 or this should have been 0 either enabling this particular and gate and disabling this one or maybe enabling this particular and gate and disabling this particular thing so what is going to happen is your flip flop if it was in the set state it will come to reset state and if the flip flop was in the reset state it will go to set state and this change over from the set to reset state will happen continuously as long as there is clockage once you stop giving the clockage toggling will not happen toggling cannot happen new data cannot enter inside so that is what i said in the initial video sessions also if your flip flop has to be taking a new data you need to be giving the clockage you need to be keep the data ready and you need to give the clockage as soon as the clockage is given the new data will enter inside so this is with respect to your jk flip flop so jk flip flop has avoided one and one condition in the sr flip flop which was an illegal condition and that particular problem has been permanently sorted out in the jk flip flop with the help of the feedback from the output to the input side so that is what this is with respect to your jk flip flop similarly what you can do is you can connect a negative edge here you can connect a negative edge here you can connect a bubble here and you can connect a negative edge here with respect to negative edge also it will be working in the same fashion it will toggle it will be set it will be reset and it will be showing the previous state so that doesn't make a difference so this is all with respect to your d flip flop and jk flip flop